Amber doesn't take defeat very well. Here's what happened previously on Highway Blossoms. Before I can answer, she started shouting at someone else. Howard! Hey, Howard! Come over here! Oh god, no, Howard, don't come over here. I sink down to lean against the wall of the cave. Marina does the same. I like these images right here. They're really well done. Our clothes are dusty from beginning being on the ground so much. Marina pokes me in the side. You okay? I draw a ready breath. Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry. I don't know what that was about. I just got super frustrated. Yeah, I could tell. Can it? I flick her gently on the knee. But, uh, that was kind of embarrassing. No, it's okay, really. I cry all the time at home. Don't worry. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel better. It's just... It's like losing. Not finding the treasure, I mean. So I'm mad for wasting all our time on this. Aren't you? Don't? Okay. I thought you said you licked me gently on the knee. I'm like, don't lick my knee, you freaking weirdo. No, why would I be? She sounds genuinely surprised. Because now we're behind on the next one, too. What if someone beats us to all the rest of them? <laughs> like, why the fudge would you look me on the- oh, okay. You flicked. <laughs> now you sound like me! Oh god, is there a cure? Meanie. But really... I had fun, so I don't think it was a waste of time. Even if we're not, like, super rich now, I'm glad we came here. Once again, I don't even have to look to know she's smiling. She's always smiling, after all. It's one of the cuter things about her, and there are lots of those. I'm afraid to look up and meet her eyes. Afraid because of what I've been starting to feel lately, and how I've been thinking of her. Naked. Just kidding. Naked with clothes on. There we go. I fixed it. It's stupid to get bothered by this now, I know. We've been together all day. Right now, when I'm already being over emotional, I feel like it'd be a bad idea. Amber? And then, by reflex, I do it anyway. She got lock lips with her. <laughs> uh huh, she sure, fixed it. <laughs> I did. I, I fixed it. I look over and I was right. My heart flutters a little, but the smile I was anticipating has been replaced by yet another look of concern. Yeah, you're right. I guess it wasn't so bad. She brightens up immediately. For real? Mm-hmm. I'm good now. Still, sorry for freaking out there for a sec. It's okay. Don't feel bad. Groaning, I stand up again. I'm definitely gonna be sore tomorrow. We should get out of here, though. Longer we spend, the more likely we are to get caught. It's been probably 45 minutes or so since we ditched the tour group. Hopefully they didn't get search and rescue out looking for us. I offer my hand to Marina, who's still sitting on the ground. She takes it and I haul her to her feet. After dusting herself off, we both walk to the edge of the cave. It's impossible to see anything. Even the trail across the way is invisible from here. Watch your step going down the hill. Both fall to their death. Yeah, we don't want anyone to almost die again. Going down the hill is easier than going up, but we still have to be careful. We make it to the bottom without incident. We don't risk the flashlights until we're back across the fence and on the trail. Now that we're not out of bounds, it doesn't matter if people see us. Where do we go now? Hmm. I think about it for a moment. There's not much point in catching up with the tour again. Besides, it's probably ended by now. Still, if they did notice that we disappeared, then it could be bad for us to just leave the park. Last thing I want to see is our faces on missing person posters the next time we stop at a gas station. They've got a 45 minute lead on us, and they'll only grow if we try to find them. We'll just go back to the parking lot and get out of here. If anyone asks, we can just say we left early. Woohoo! Thank god, I was hoping you'd say that. How come? I'm so tired. Same. My back's gonna hurt for a year. At least you have the comfy bed. 
Hey, Damn right, you I can do. Always... Uh, <sighs> no. No. Uh, grab some more pillows from the closet if you need. There you go. You fixed it. There are more? Oh, yeah. Gramps liked to have a zillion pillows when he slept. Oh. She sounds let down. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have made that connection there. Don't worry. They weren't, like, his special pillows or anything. You can use them. All right. Damn. She really starts to worry when I mention him. Guess there's good reason for that. But right now... Though the thought is a familiar jab of sadness, I'm not about to break down. I'm doing okay for now. We're quiet the rest of the way down the trail, though. Without having to stick to the slow pace of a guided tour, it's actually a quick walk. There aren't any other hikers out, which surprises me. It's dark, but not that late. As we reach the parking lot, it seems like we had perfect timing. Or maybe perfectly awful. Spilling out of a trailhead on the other side is a tour group that we were briefly part of. I recognize the tour guide as well as... Oh, there you girls are! Linda. She came from my blind spot, where we had time to hide. I don't even try to force a smile as I turn to face her. She strolls up to us, Dino's still asleep. Howard's nowhere to be seen, though. Maybe he's in their car. I was hoping to see y'all before you left. Yeah, we were pretty tired, so we came back early. Oh, I'll bet you are. What's that supposed to mean? She winks at me like she's in on the joke. Problem is, I don't know what the joke's supposed to be. Uh, what do you mean? Don't think I didn't notice you two running off now. Figured you were, you know. Oh god, lady! What is wrong with the people in this game? <laughs> she laughs and shakes her head. I think that's good, though. Reminds me of me and my Howard when we were younger. We used to sneak off every chance we got, if you know what I mean. I don't want to know what you mean. My face starts to turn red as I realize what she's thinking. I mean, it's probably tomato colored, though I don't turn to look. We weren't... Um, I mean, we're not. No need to be embarrassed or anything like that. And besides, at least you won't get pregnant. Oh my god, can you stop talking? She laughs heartily, the baby on her chest bouncing with the motion. <laughs> Sorry, though. I'm getting to be a bit too nosy for my own good. Y'all girls be safe out there. It was nice to get to know you. She grabs my hand from my side and pumps it in a vigorous handshake. Then does the same to Marina. Neither of us three are still dumbfounded. She's not, she's not wrong. I mean... No. Scissoring with another chick will not keep pregnant, but still... <laughs> Then she heads off towards the sea of cars, more of a puddle now since most have already left. I turn to Marina. As expected, her face is scarlet. Um, wow. Right? Wow. Right? That poor baby. Oh, that poor baby. And that poor husband. I mean... He's the one that got with her, so... I didn't think people like that were real. Like, they only existed in books and movies and stuff. They say the desert does weird things to your head. Or maybe Wisconsin does. <laughs> they just mad because she was right. <laughs> I sure I can start walking back towards the RV. I'm glad that Marina doesn't push the topic at Linda's misconception. I unlock the door and let Marina in first. We're one of the last ones here. Before I pull the door shut, I take a final look around Canyon to Shea, of what little I can see of it. it may have been a bust, but like Marina said, it was a total waste of time. We talk about we didn't even get laid. Of course, it was a waste of time. Inside the RV once again, I crash down into the driver's seat and kick my feet up on the dash. It's a relief to sit on something soft. Like a satellite, Marina hovers around me, expectant. So that was a failure. 
Obviously. Do you think it might be in a different part of the canyon? Maybe, but we're not gonna find out. We could spend days out here and not find anything. Most likely, someone else found it before us. Maybe even before this whole treasure hunt thing started. She stares at the ground, then perks back up. That's okay, though. All we can do is move on. Reaching into the glove compartment, she brings out the journal and hands it to me. Come on! Show me why the human travel guide is the best. I look at her for a moment, then with a smile, gently take it from her. Sure thing. But that's the first and only time you're ever gonna call me that, okay? Okay. I flipped through the journal and skimmed the pages. I skipped one of the entries last time because it looked like a jumbled puzzle. If we're going to find the rest of the treasure, then we need to tackle this head on. Bracing myself for the confusion, I find the entry and groan. I write to you today not from my dear Lamassi's winged landmark, but from a destination on an unforeseen detour. During my journey eastbound, I encountered a split within the dusted road. I have encountered many of these on my travels, but this one has triggered a thought. That maybe, perhaps, I have been too obvious with my hiding. Let's assume a jealous peer wanted to track me, paranoid or not, if they so desired, they easily could. My steed's prints are set within the sand I am not disguised my livelihood. In fact, one may call these a trail. If one were to follow this trail, they may even happen upon my bounty. The likelihood of this is very slim. However, I've always considered myself to be a man who only takes calculated risks. Which is why I'm shocked that this, the, that this thought has never crossed my mind before. Surely an intelligent, rugged, and worldly individual such as myself would have come to this conclusion by now. Or perhaps I am none of those things? Nonetheless, I marked the split and took the path I felt less less traveled. After I'd covered enough distance, I found a satisfactory location. Acres of identical arched stone were spread across this area. The more I traveled, the more there were. On occasion, I had seen some, but never so close together, nor so plentiful. But I do w worry one could narrow down the gold if they had the will. Alas, the remnants of my illness reappeared, forcing me to find a resting site. Eventually, I settled between two stones, unlike the arch stone. I often feared they would fall or collapse on me, but their balance seemed steady, and they provided shade and scenery. So once again, I am rested and determined. While this detour took precious time away from me, I very much feel it was worth the security it provides, even if it was unnecessary. Yes, this morning I looked in my pouch. It appears as if I have enough gold for one last burial. The Mossy's landmark seems more than pop proper for this. Oh no. Oh no? Does that mean you don't know where it's at? She knows exactly where it's at. The opposite. I know exactly oh my God. where it's at. I win. Then what's the problem? I lean back in the chair and look at the ceiling. It's in Arches National Park. Cool, then let's go! I ignore her and keep looking at the ceiling. Arches has over 2,000 natural stone arches. The miner said he hid it between two stones. Oh shit. <laughs> That's scary. Who are these characters? She blinks. I sigh. An arch is a rock formation that curves in the air. Think of it as an upside down U. Finally, she gets the message. Her face morphs into a blank canvas and she stares out the windshield. Oh no. Yeah. If we want to find this thing, then we need to look between every single arch and arches. Wow. Good luck with that. I'm going to bed. <laughs> After a moment of petrified silence, Marina takes back the journal and returns it to its proper place in the glove compartment. With a shaky smile, Marina looks back at me and tries blowing it off. Uh, Arches National Park, huh? It's somewhere in Moab, right? You ever been? With a shaky grin of my own, I spawn, totally ignoring the impossible feet ahead of us. Yeah, I went to Moab a long time ago. 
Arches is really famous. Like, world famous. We're both sweating, staring at the long road ahead as we try our best to make casual conversation. It's like a game of chicken. Who's going to break first? I've always wanted to go. Where have you vacationed to before? Honestly, nowhere. Not out of the state, at least. For real? Not even to visit family? Nuh-uh. My grandparents live in New Mexico, too. I think only my big brother has been outside of the state. You got any other siblings? Or is it just you two? She shakes her head. There's nine of us. I've got oh my God. two younger brothers, three older brothers, an older sister, and two little sisters. Damn! Someone didn't know where to stop. I whistle. Damn, that's a big ass Christmas card. <laughs> Right? At some point, it's just like, aren't you ever gonna stop? Wow. I wouldn't even think that, because that that's, brings a disgusting mental picture. <laughs> I'm almost out of fingers to count on. Chuckling, I stand up and walk to the back. Marina follows behind me. Do you want to share my bed? What about you? Do you have any siblings? Nah, just me. Otherwise, they'd probably be riding around this old thing with us. As I say that, I collapse down into my bed, sprawling out. Sitting up front felt good, but this is heavenly. The bed sinks a little as she takes a seat on its edge. Get out of here. Get out of my bedroom. I can't really imagine having a single brother or sister. Definitely not eight of them. But I guess they don't all live at home. Actually? They do? You're kidding. Oh my- do they have a mansion? Only one of my brothers has moved out. It's the worst. Like, you have to make a reservation to take a shower. Oh, they gotta use, like, all the cold water first? You don't get any hot water? No wonder you ran away. Pretty much. As soon as I finished school, I was just like, okay, time to get out of here. How long ago was that? Just a couple months. Two-ish. What'd you major in? Huh? Like, what'd you get your degree in? Oh, um, not college. High school. Oh. I just finished high school. Huh. Huh? Using my elbows to prop myself up. What? Uh, how old are you? Is she underage? Get out of this vehicle right now. <laughs> Putting her hands on her hips, Marina puffs out her cheeks and looks offended. I'll have you know, it's very rude to ask a lady her age. She deflates. But I'm 18. Okay, she's Why? 18. We're good. We're good. She's not like 16. Oh, thank God. She's 13? Like... Ugh, oh, I'm 40. I thought you were 15. I let myself fall back again. I was afraid you were gonna be underage and that I'd get arrested for kidnapping or something. 16 is legal in Japan. <laughs> okay, well, you know. And these are anime. You're right, you're right. Yeah. It could work. No way! And besides, I told you my parents were fine with it. Well, accepted it. What about you? How old are you? Are they gonna be fine with us? Just a year older. Wait, you're only 19? Now it's her turn to be shocked. Why is she surprised? You think I was like freaking 40, really? How old did you think I was? Marina busts up laughing. I'm actually a little bit embarrassed. I look away, blowing my hair away from my face. Just kidding, just kidding. I figured you were like my age or a bit older. Two years at the most. Maybe ten. <laughs> she looks twenty-something for real. Oh yeah, she does. 
And look at her staring at the wall. Oh, come on. Don't be mad. I was just playing. Whew. You're gonna die before me. That's a good thing. <laughs> All of a sudden, she sounds seriously regretful. I want to mess with her, but the puppy dog look she gives me over her shoulder is too hard to resist. Sorry, what? My hearing must be getting bad at my old age. She throws a pillow at me from the bed beside her, and I deflect it with my arm. <laughs> Good save, Granny. Now she leans back, too, staring up the ceiling. Her hair spreads across my leg. I don't move it. I touch it. I caress it. I start eating it. <laughs> then I realize that all the worry and nervousness we had about arches is gone. Somewhere along the line, we just forgot about it. Huh. I don't know when we reach the point in our relationship where we can be comfortable being this close to each other, but I'm glad that we have. Maybe, just maybe, I'm enjoying the closeness a little too much. <laughs> it's that kind of stream. Yeah, that's right. Wow. <laughs> we eating hair now. <laughs> Slurping it like spaghetti. It's been a long time since I dated someone. Graham's health made having a girlfriend impossible. There wasn't time for anyone else. How do you know? Okay, like, when she says girlfriend, does she mean a friend that's a girl? Does she don't know if this chick is a lesbian or not? If it is the other way around. Oh, I hardly had time for myself. Not that I cared. I'd do it all over again. Still, it's nice. Having someone to talk to, so it's not just me and my thoughts. Just as I'm about to settle into the mood, she sits up and stretches. Wait, what mood? Settle into the mood? Oh, I'm pretty sleepy. Are you going to bed soon? I'm in my bed. Nah, I took a nap earlier, so I'm good. It's only a few hours to Moab, so I'll drive us there tonight. <laughs> she means a friend who's a girl and likes girls and thinks girls are friendly. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Moab, huh? Well, yeah. Something wrong? No, I was just kind of wondering. She trails off. Wondering... Um, how far away is the Grand Canyon? Really? From here? I don't know, three or four hours? But it's in the total opposite direction that we're going. Oh, okay. The crestfallen look on her face should be illegal. Sorry, I should have looked at the map before I asked. Smiling, she turns and heads her bed, disappointment clinging to her like perfume. Don't fall for it. Don't you go to the Grand Canyon. Night, Amber. Don't you do it, Amber. Leaning against my pillows, I watch as she slowly trods off to the back. Come on now, I'm not that heartless. Wait a sec. She's gonna do- oh my god. Amber. Amber! She freezes mid-step. I guess since I was gonna drive all night anyway, we can make a detour. Are you kidding me? A pretty big detour, too. So don't blame me if all the treasure is gone by the time we're done. She turns around, hope springing in her face now. But I guess it's like a requirement that you see the Grand Canyon when you're sightseeing in Arizona. So that's what we'll do. You've got a lot of vacations to make up for. All the tiredness and disappointment vanishes in an instant. Like a bird taking flight, she hurries back over to where I'm just standing up. A trademark marine, marina crash tackle hug knocks me onto my butt in bed again. I pat her on the back a couple times before she rises. Have I ever told you you're the best? Uh, no, but I'd like to hear it more often. Probably, but don't you forget it. I couldn't if I tried. Poof. I poke her in the belly as I make my way up to the front again. Grab me an energy drink from the fridge, will ya? When she sits down in the passenger seat, she has two cans of the energy drink. Thought you were going to bed. No way! I'm too excited now! I'll keep you company on the drive. 
Plus, it's only like 8 o'clock, isn't it? Beats me. Sounds right. I pop open the tab on my drink and take a long drought. It tastes awful, but it wakes me up like nothing else. I guess I make the makers cut out sweeteners and nice flavors for more stimulants. To drink it faster, I hold my breath to hide the taste and chug. Gasping, I crumple the empty can and toss it into the trash bag. Marina, on the other hand, sips it daintily, wincing each time. Ugh, people seriously drink this stuff? Somehow. It works, though. It's pretty much the strongest stuff you can get without a prescription. After taking another sip, Marina retches and sticks her tongue out. She reminds me of a cat with fur stuck on its tongue. That's that's an odd image, but okay. I, mean, I get it, but it's just weird to think about. She sets the can in the cup holder beside me. Do you want mine? I can't drink this. Ew, you could put backwash in there. Don't you do it, Amber. I'd have a heart attack if I drank too. Okay. Just leave it and I'll drink it tomorrow. No! That's even worse. That's the only way to improve an awful energy drink is to get it warm and flat, right? As I start the RV, Marina says something, but it's soft enough that I can't hear it over the engine revving. But she just said, I love you, and we just missed it. What was that? Old lady hearing failing on me again. Smiling, she shakes her head. I was just saying thanks again. Don't thank me yet. I could fall asleep at the wheel and kill us both. <laughs> at least I die happy. No, though, uh, not just that. For taking me with you and doing the treasure hunt and everything. You must be super tired. You're saying all sorts of weird stuff now. I mean it. I know it's kind of random. I'm just really happy I met you. After a moment of blushing, I laugh a little under my breath. She said, I love you! <laughs> yeah, me too. I prevent any more cheesy conversation by carefully pulling out of the parking lot and back onto the exit road. I'm definitely glad that Marina's enjoying herself. I'm having fun too. But talking about that sort of thing, it makes me feel all squirmy inside. What the fudge is going on downstairs? Like it don't match up what Marina thinks of me. Pushing those thoughts out of my head, I focus on the road. We have to keep our eyes peeled for animals out here. There are lots of stray dogs in this part of the state. And dozens of deer and antelope just waiting to race cars. Is this where the deer and the antelope play? Oh my god, it is! It's where the deer and the antelope play! The road is devoid of other vehicles, though, and since I know the exits to take, more or less, we should make pretty good time. Once we get back onto the highway, Marina hoists a bucket of tapes onto her lap. What do you want to listen to? Not you. Hmm. I glance between the road and the bin, scanning both. I settle on an album that I haven't had heart to listen to in a while. It feels like tonight is the right time. I fish out the tape and slide into the player. As the first chords start up, I watch Marina's face for a reaction. It won't have the same sentimental value to her. I know. But it's an emotional album in general. Lots of dynamics to the music and simple but heartfelt songwriting. Gramps used to play along, but said he couldn't quite capture the feeling himself. As I'd hoped, Marina's quiet, which means that she's listening. Her cheek is pressed against the window again. Damn, wow, that was savage. <laughs> Her reflection barely visible, looks wistful. Good. She shut the fudge up. For the second time today, a growing pressure starts in my eyes. I pull at them and the motion catches Marina's attention. You sure you're not too tired? Are you okay, baby? Oh yeah, eyes are just a little itchy. Damn it, my voice shakes as I speak, but she notices she doesn't say anything. This album was another one of Graham's favorites, and there's a reason I haven't listened to it since he passed. Turning it on might have been a mistake. We may yet go off the road if I end up crying, or I might just die of embarrassment. I sniffle a couple times to keep myself under control. Damn allergies. Uh-huh, sure. I don't even know if she hears me. I'm kind of tempted to turn it off and play something else. I want Marina to hear it. It won't mean anything special to her, I'm sure. I want to see what she thinks. To see if maybe Gramps and I were crazier, or if there's more to the music and the man playing it. 
He was a guitarist and songwriter who just went by the name of June. Died a few years ago. Fighting back the nostalgia and the bubbling feelings of how much I miss Gramps is hard. I'm able to hold on, though, and keep from breaking down. 45 minutes later, when the tape ends, Marina hits the play button again to start it over. I'd say it was worth it. I let it play on for hours, long after Marina's fallen asleep beside me. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and hit the sub for more walkthroughs, playthroughs, and let's plays on the gaming experience.